Can one prepare to survive in a nuclear environment and know how to effectively react to a nuclear hazard? Part two of this series covered the types of nuclear bursts and some of the nuclear blast injuries. This video will cover thermal injuries, radiation, and fallout from a nuclear detonation. Fortunately, most of the isotopes formed by the explosion of atomic devices have short half-lives. The total level of radioactivity caused by fallout fades quite rapidly. However, some bomb debris remains active for many years. It is the buildup of these products which is the cause for our concern. Thermal injuries, the heat and light the nuclear fireball emits causes thermal injuries. First, second, or third degree burns may result. Flash blindness also occurs. This blindness may be permanent or temporary depending on the degree of exposure of the eyes. Substantial cover and distance from the explosion can prevent thermal injuries. Clothing will provide some significant protection against thermal injuries. First aid for thermal injuries is the same as first aid for burns. Cover open burns second or third degree to prevent the entry of radioactive particles. Wash all burns before covering. Radiation injuries. Neutrons, gamma radiation, alpha radiation, and beta radiation cause radiation injuries. Neutrons are high-speed, extremely penetrating particles that will actually smash cells within your body. Gamma radiation is similar to X-ray and also a highly penetrating radiation. During the initial fireball stage of a nuclear detonation, initial gamma radiation and neutrons are the most serious threat. Beta and alpha radiation are radioactive particles normally associated with radioactive dust from fallout. They are short-range particles and you can easily protect yourself against them if you take precautions. Residual radiation. Residual radiation is all radiation emitted after one minute after the initial nuclear explosion. Residual radiation consists of induced radiation and fallout. Induced radiation. It describes a relatively small, intensely radioactive area directly underneath the nuclear weapons fireball. The irradiated earth in this area will remain highly radioactive for an extremely long time. You should not travel into an area of induced radiation. Nuclear fallout. Fallout consists of radioactive soil and water particles as well as weapon fragments. During a surface detonation or if an airburst nuclear fireball touches the ground, large amounts of soil and water are vaporized along with the bomb's fragments and forced upward to altitudes of 25,000 meters or more. When these vaporized contents cool, they can form more than 200 different radioactive products. The vaporized bomb contents condense into tiny radioactive particles that the wind carries and they fall back to earth as radioactive dust. Fallout particles emit alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Alpha and beta radiation are relatively easy to counteract and residual gamma radiation is much less intense than the gamma radiation emitted during the first minute after the explosion. Fallout is your most significant radiation hazard provided you have not received a lethal radiation dose from the initial nuclear detonation.